This morning, I'm going to be talking about output concepts, so critical concepts that I think you need a good understanding of in order to get high quality, consistent output. I'll talk a little bit more about the details of that in a few minutes, but this afternoon, I'm going to start out in the print module. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you a few examples of things we'll be doing in the print module. We'll be doing single photo layouts. Of course, that's what you would expect. But we'll also go on to do multiple photo layouts. So first, just putting multiple photos on a page so you can save, save paper. Then we'll move into how to do contact sheets. After that, we'll move into how to do more creative layouts using the contact sheet functionality. You'd be surprised at what you can do with rows and columns. Next, we'll go into picture packages when you need multiple sizes of the same photo. And then we move into what I consider the most fun part of the print module, which is custom layouts where you can freeform layout photos on a page. So here's one example I designed for my desktop background. Here's another example, photos on top of photos. And then just a third example where I've got one photo spanning, spanning a few different cells. Once we will be working in the print module this afternoon and tomorrow morning. We'll talk about layouts, how to save your work, then we'll talk about how to print to your printer with profiles, how to print a JPEG so that you can send things out to have printed, or just to share electronically. Then tomorrow afternoon, we'll move into the slideshow module. So this is a pretty simple slideshow design, but I'll show you how to design a slideshow, how to export it to PDF or export it to video. So you can take your slideshows, add music to them here in Lightroom, put them on YouTube, put them on Facebook, um, share them any way you choose. After we do the slideshow module tomorrow afternoon, we'll also go into the web module. The first question I'll answer is, who can use it? You know, what's it for? Um, you need space out on the web, but a lot of people don't realize that, that you probably have space available through your internet service provider, even if you don't have your own website. So definitely tune in for that, even if you're not sure that you'll be able to use it. Then finally, on Wednesday, we'll go into the book module, which is brand new in Lightroom 4. So here's just an example of a book. I really uh, threw this together so you could see an example of just a few of the pages that, um, you know, what the book module is capable of. But you've, we've got tons of cover designs, and you can have text on top of photos, and text pages, and two-page spreads, and photos that span cells, pictures in pictures, um, pictures in text, uh, full, full bleed photos, different backgrounds to your pages. So all kinds of um, functionality in the book module. And again, the book module can be used to actually create physical photo books. It can also be used to create PDFs. So I've created books that I've downloaded to my iPad. And that's how I show off my, my photos or, or my layouts. Um, you can also, of course, share those electronically as well. So that's, that's um, what we're going to be doing for the next three days. As I mentioned, we're going to start with output concepts. And you know, I've really struggled with when to present this material, because this is kind of the dry part of the course. It's the heavy lifting part. Now, if you watched my Lightroom Fundamentals course, you know that I think the first day we spent in the library module, and that was kind of not the sexy part of Lightroom either, right? It was once we got to develop that it really became fun, but it was critical. It was really important. Same here, um, understanding these output concepts um, I think is really important. I'm going to cover things like size and resolution for both printed output and screen-based output. What is resolution? And you know, how do you set it for printed output versus screen-based output? How do you size your screen-based output? Regarding printing, whether you do it yourself or you have somebody else do it, how large can you print your photo and still get a great quality result? Uh, so I'll talk about that. I'll then go into JPEG quality, which you probably have seen the quality setting um, when you export. It's also in all of these modules. How do you set that? We'll then go into, um, I hesitate to use the term, so I won't use it yet. But we'll, <laughs> we'll go into the fundamental issue that we have with output, really the most frustrating part of output, and that is, why don't I see an output, whether it's printed or it's on the web, but why don't what I see here in output, why isn't it what I see in Lightroom? Why doesn't it look like that beautiful photo in Lightroom? And 
what do I do about it, short of pulling my hair out and just giving up on output <laughs> entirely, right? So I'm going to go into the issues that you'll encounter and how we deal with those. Now, that's referred to as color management, um, which can get very technical, and I could spend days on it if I really knew enough to do that. But, um, but this is going to be the Cliff Notes version, really with the essentials that I think you need to know to not get frustrated you know, when you get into creating output. So that's the plan for the, um, for the morning. I like to use the roller coaster analogy. You know, for the morning, you know, we're on that slow, kind of boring uphill climb on the roller coaster. But starting this afternoon, we're just going to start. We're going to start in the free fall, the fun part, the fun part of the course. Okay, so let's go ahead and start on output concepts. Now, the first thing I'm going to cover is size and resolution for printed output, and I have to take a few steps. What's resolution generally? What's this thing called native photo resolution? And then what does your printer do, whether it's your own printer or somebody else's printer? So there's a few steps in this, but ultimately where I'm going is how do you set your settings and how large can I print and still get a great result? Now, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page with this, I just want to point out with any photo here, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this photo. So I've got this photo. I'm going to zoom way in on it here in the library module. And you can see that the photo is made up of squares of information. Those are pixels. That's what your camera captures, squares of information. And in fact, as I enlarge a photo, of course, those squares of information, those pixels, get larger. The pixels don't really have a physical size. We can make them as small or as big as we want. Now, I also want to show you, I'm going to zoom back out here, that in the library module, if I hit I for information, I can see how many pixels I have in the photo. So this was my first digital camera. It was a six megapixel camera, six million pixels, which is what 2,000 times 3,000 is. So this was a full frame image. I haven't cropped it. It's got six million pixels. If I go to this next photo, which was taken with the same camera, you can see that I have fewer pixels because I cropped this one. So that's just a little bit of introduction before I jump into the really exciting PowerPoint presentation. So size and resolution for printed output. By the way, I should mention that if you hit I for information and you want to get rid of that, you need to hit I a couple more times. Okay. So your photo has a certain number of pixels. We've got the six megapixel example. That's how many pixels we have. OK. So your photo doesn't have a physical size until you specify how big those pixels are going to be. That is, how many will fit per square inch. Now, I want to warn you that there's a little bit of multiplication and division in this presentation. So if math isn't your favorite thing, <laughs> Don't worry about it. You're never going to have to do this math in Lightroom. Lightroom is going to do the math for you and show you the answers. Um, so just understand the concepts. And if you're even thinking, well, I'm not even sure I want to understand all the concepts. I just want you to tell me what to do. I'm going to do that as well. So OK, so let's say we have 10 pixels per inch. So our pixels are fairly large. In that case, if I if I simply divide the, the height by the number of pixels per inch, I've got output that's 200 inches high by 300 inches wide. But if I pack in more pixels per inch, let's say 100 pixels per inch, then of course I get a smaller result, right? 20 inches high by 30 inches wide. And then 300 pixels per inch, I'm down to a 6.6 .6 by 10 inch result. So I'm simply making the pixels smaller, I'm packing more in per inch, so there's fewer inches to spread them across. Now, I realize that a lot of you are overseas and you work in centimeters. Um, so obviously, the concepts are exactly the same. I should say inches or centimeters every time out of respect for the rest of the world. But I'm just going to leave it at, inch, at, at inches. So I am the center of the world today. So <laughs> OK. So pixels per inch is called resolution. And it's measured, it's measured in pixel per inch. OK, it's, it's abbreviated PPI, or PCI, for centimeters. So that's the simple concept of resolution, how many we're packing in per inch. So the next thing I want to talk about is your photo's native resolution. Okay, 
the native resolution of your photo is for a given output size, for a given 8 by 10 output size, for example. The native resolution of your photo is how many pixels are available per inch. For example, we'll take this same 6 megapixel example. If my output is 2 inches by 3 inches, and I have 2,000 pixels high available divided by the 2 inches, I have 1,000 pixels available per inch for that photo. Okay. Larger print, 6.6 .6 by 10 inches, I have 300 pixels per inch available for that photo. So logically, as I get larger, I need to spread those available pixels out across more inches, so I'm going to have fewer available per inch. 8 by 12, I'm down to 250 pixels available per inch, getting spread out across a larger output result. 16 by 24, 125, 32 by 48, I'm down to 63. So I think intuitively we know that as we enlarge our photo, um, the information has to get spread out more across that, across that result. So that's the native resolution of the photo. And I want to show you in Lightroom, this was my, this little Lightroom icon was my reminder to go to Lightroom to show you how to see the native resolution in your photo. So I'm going to do my handy Windows 7 shortcut here. It's kind of cool. See, we don't, I don't need a Mac. Um, <laughs> OK, and if you want to follow along, go ahead and with any photo, go to the print module. And I'm going to start out, I just need to get a, a photo layout on this page. So up in the template browser here, and I'll talk about you know, what all these things are when we get to the print module. But I'm simply going to choose this template, which is an 8 by 10 photo. OK, so now I have an 8 by 10 photo on the page. And I want to see, given that I started out with 6 million pixels, how many do I have available per inch when I'm printing an 8 by 10 photo? Now, the secret to seeing this information, on the right-hand side here, if you scroll down to this guide section, it may be collapsed. So if you see guides, but it has a sideways triangle, go ahead and click on that. And turn on your guides. And it's still not, it's not going to show you yet the information we're looking for, but that's the first step. It does show that we've got an 8 by 10 photo. And then scroll all the way down to the print job panel and uncheck this box that says print resolution. Make sure it says print to printer, otherwise you won't see that. But print to printer, uncheck print resolution. And now Lightroom is showing me here the native, or the, yeah, the native resolution of my photo at 8 by 10. So I have 250 pixels per inch available for this print. And to skip ahead, that's going to be enough to get a good quality result. But I'll, of course, get to, get to guidelines on that. Now let me go to a smaller uh, uh, print. So I'm going to click on 5 by 7 here in the template browser just to quickly get to a 5 by 7. And you'll see that we have four, or I have 400 pixels available. Now many of you have 24 megapixel cameras or even more. You have a lot more pixels available than I do in my, in my old 6 megapixel camera. But at 5 by 7, I've got 400 pixels per inch available. Now you can imagine that if I went to a 13 by 19, so 8 by 10 was 250. If I went to a 13 by 19, that would, that would go down substantially. So I'm going to reinforce that uh, again later, how to show this native photo resolution. But I wanted to, to give you an idea that the information is here. You don't have to calculate it or, or anything like that. So let me go ahead and jump back to the PowerPoint presentation here. Now we understand photo native resolution. But I hate to break it to you, but your printer doesn't print at your photo's native resolution. So my printer's not going to print at 250. Your printer is going to print at whatever your printer wants to print at, okay? which is its native resolution. Okay? And that generally is 360 for Epson printers and 300 for most other printers, HP and Canon printers, 
Um, printing services that you send your photos out to, Shutterfly, others, they generally print at 300 pixels per inch. Okay. So we've got less or more than that. They print at that, so at 360 or 300. So what happens to, to, um, to get to, to the output result? If your photo has more pixels per inch than what your printer prints at, either Lightroom or your printer will simply throw away the extra information. And that's fine. Um, it, it does a good job of throwing it away, and we don't need it. So if my photo has 450 pixels per inch, and I need to get down to 360 because I have an Epson printer, the, the rest of the information will be thrown away. If my photo has fewer pixels per inch, more will be added or invented to get up to that 300 or 360 um, pixels. So a lot of math is done, and it basically guesses uh, with a lot of accuracy, but it guesses at how to add more pixels in to still get a good quality result. So if I jump back to the library module here just to illustrate this to you, and we look at the individual pixels in this photo, Lightroom will look at the color and tone of each individual pixel here and slip in more pixels in between these so that it still looks like the photo we know, but so that it has more pieces of information. Now, this process is called interpolation. It's upsampling for adding more, downsampling for, for uh, throwing away additional pixels. And there's nothing wrong with interpolating. You know, imagine if we weren't free to throw out pixels or to add more pixels, we could only print at one size, right? Uh, whatever size gave us a native resolution of 360 or 300. So we need the flexibility to get rid of pixels and add pixels so we can print at different sizes. Now, I know some of you are thinking ahead to um, printing large and how the results may not be good. And I'm saying there's nothing wrong with interpolating. It does have its limits, OK? So I'm going to get to that. Now, this is just a little detail. I'll enforce it later or reinforce it later. But Lightroom does a better job of making up more information than your printer does. So when tomorrow we get into the print settings, I'm going to show you to how to have Lightroom add these pixels in or throw pixels away rather than having your printer do it. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this with our example again. So this very small print where I had 1,000 pixels per inch, Lightroom's going to throw pixels away to get down to the 360 or 300, depending on what you're going to print at. This example was set up very precisely, 6.6 .6 by 10, because it gave us exactly the resolution of a, of a 300 um, PPI printer. Okay? So that's perfect. Nothing needs to be done. 250 pixels per inch. A little bit more needs to be invented to get up to 300 or 360. If I'm starting with 125 in my photo, a lot of information needs to be invented to get up to 300 or 360. You know, it may seem like a doubling, you know, approximately a doubling of the number of pixels. It's really more like a quadrupling because we're working in two dimensions and there's, you know, more to the math. Um, but you're adding a lot of information. It's making up a lot of information. And if I really wanted to print 32 by 48, and I only started out with 63 pixels per inch, that's just an incredible amount of upsampling. And as you already are guessing, things are going to break down, and it's not going to look very good. Okay. So how much upsampling can I get away with? You know, it's funny. No one ever says, how small can I make my print, right? Because we know that we can make it uh, as small as, as we want. Yes, a lot of information may be thrown away, but the smaller it is, the less detail we can see, so it looks absolutely fine to us. But how large can we print? If you upsample too much, what you're going to find is that your photo is going to look fuzzy. Okay? How much you can get away with depends. There is no answer. So we're done for the morning. You know, that's, <laughs> that's all I have to say. No, OK. So <laughs> it depends on many things. It depends on what the viewing distance is. If I'm looking at a print from right here, I'm going to be pretty dissatisfied much quicker than if I'm looking at a print and it's very far away, right? Now, how do you tell the photographers in an art gallery, right? They're all looking at photos like this. 
um, whereas most people are looking at them from a few feet away, right? Now, billboards. Billboards are several hundred feet away. We can get away with a lot more upsampling and fuzziness in the photo because it's so far away. So it really depends on what you plan to have the viewing distance um, as. It depends on the printer and paper used. Um, some, some papers hold detail more than other papers. More expensive papers, glossy papers compared to matte papers. So you may come to an answer that works for you with one type of paper and then want to revisit that when you start looking at other papers. And then it's simply subjective. Some people have a higher ability to see fine differences in photos, and some people care more than others, right? Um, I mean, I, do I care if it, right, you know, at this distance I can see a difference? Some people really do. I mean, when, when you're going for that absolutely, you know, perfect, beautiful, fine art gallery print, you may care more than, um, you know, something for your own home or something that you're sharing more casually. So I really encourage you guys, if you get into printing at home or you're sending things out, if you want to print large, do some tests, okay? Print something that's got a low native resolution and then print something that's, you know, at, at a higher resolution and see at what point you're not satisfied with your prints. Now for me, what works these days is a minimum of 180 to 200 pixels per inch as the native resolution in my photos. When my photos start to have less than that, I start to be not satisfied. They start to be too fuzzy for me, even when I sharpen them. Uh, and I'll mention sharpening again later. But five years ago, I was fine at 150. Um, and when my friends look at larger prints that I've done that were at 150, they're perfectly satisfied with them. So it really takes some, some experimentation with. Any questions that have come up on this, this concept of resolution and how large you can print? Anyone from the audience have any questions? Checking in? No? We do have some from the uh, internet. Um, the internet is always good about keeping yeah. us full of questions. Mm -hmm. I have one. Uh, camera guy from Dallas, Texas is saying, what's the difference between pixels per inch PPI and dots per inch DPI? Are they the same thing? And I know this is a big one. Great question. Um, I don't know the answer. Okay. No, just kidding. No. <laughs> OK, so pixels per inch is about pixels. Dots per inch, dots per inch is about dots of ink. So when my photo goes to the printer, an individual pixel that gets printed may be printed with many dots of ink. Okay. So it really, it really is on the printer end. So I think I did the math and based on um, the resolution, the, the settings I commonly use on my printer, for every pixel, I think my printer prints 32 dots of ink. Okay. Well, there you go, camera guy. This is a question that I've actually uh, often wondered um, from Fashion TV in Singapore. Uh, Laura, talking about output size, is there a formula to determine what the optimal distance to view an image is um, for a large print? So say you have a 20 by 30 image, uh, what's the best distance to view that from? I honestly don't know. Um, I, I think, I mean, for me, there's, some, there's just an intuitive mm -hmm. kind of reaction as I back up or get closer, but I, I, I don't know. There probably is some guide out there. Great question. So normally you just kind of do it by experience or just whatever, whatever seems intuitive to you? So right. So if you're going to print, a, if, you're, if you're going to be looking at something on a wall and it's going to be 10 feet away, how would you figure out what size to print it? Would you just kind of guess and just kind of go with whatever you think has worked in the past? Um, I, you know, it's funny, the reason I pause is I tend to do things the opposite way. Mm -hmm. I tend to take my photo and think about what size is going to show off that photo best. Huh. And then I figure out where to put it. Okay? Huh. Like that, that picture of the A that I just showed. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Some of my photos um, look, look good really big and some look, some look good small. Like this one I found that, you know, I've got it printed at, I don't know, 16 by 24 in a larger frame. It's fairly big and I really like it. But I did the same with this photo, and I don't like it at all. Hmm. You know, it, this photo has some detail in it that it's, I find that I want people to get closer and, and really, you know, take a look at it. 
And it, big, it's just kind of too much in your face, um, too much given away in a sense.